I'm Dr. Vincent Loray. Uh, I'm in the Division of Infectious Diseases uh, and the Department of Biostatistics and Epidemiology at the Perlman School of Medicine. Uh, my area of interest is in uh, acute and chronic liver diseases, particularly uh, chronic viral hepatitis, especially in persons co-infected with HIV infection. Co-infection with uh, chronic viral hepatitis, particularly hepatitis C, uh, is common in the setting of HIV due to shared routes of transmission. Uh, and approximately 20 to 30 percent of HIV infected patients are co-infected with chronic hepatitis C. We were interested in determining whether HIV hepatitis C co-infected patients who receive antiretroviral therapy have similar incidence rates of end-stage liver disease, particularly hepatic decompensation, hepatocellular carcinoma, and liver-related deaths compared to those with chronic hepatitis C alone. So to answer our study objectives, we conducted a retrospective cohort study using data from the Veterans Aging Cohort Study. We identified HIV hepatitis C co-infected patients who newly initiated antiretroviral therapy and then compared them to chronic hepatitis C mono-infected patients. After a baseline period of follow-up, we then followed these patients longitudinally for a median of anywhere from seven for the HIV hepatitis C co-infected patients to 10 years for the hepatitis C mono-infected patients to find the development of incident hepatic decompensation, hepatocellular carcinoma, or death due to liver disease. There have actually been very few studies that have evaluated clinical outcomes of chronic viral hepatitis, particularly in HIV hepatitis C co-infected patients. And this is one of the largest studies to date that have, uh, that have longitudinally followed both co-infected patients on antiretroviral therapy to those with chronic hepatitis C alone. Our results found that uh, antiretroviral treated co-infected patients had an 80% higher rate of hepatic decompensation compared to those with hepatitis C alone. And when we conducted subgroup analyses where we only compared the subgroup of co-infected patients who had HIV RNA suppression below 1,000 copies per mil on all viral load measurements throughout their follow-up to the hepatitis C only group, the co-infected cohort still had a 60% higher rate of hepatic decompensation compared to those with hepatitis C alone. In addition, in a separate subgroup analysis, when we restricted both the co-infected and hepatitis C mono-infected patients to only those who had minimal or no hepatic fibrosis at baseline, we still observed that the antiretroviral treated co-infected patients had a significantly higher rate of hepatic decompensation compared to hepatitis C mono-infected patients. A major question that many clinicians had was whether initiating antiretroviral therapy in HIV hepatitis C co-infected patients made those patients like hepatitis C mono-infected patients in regards to their incidence rates of hepatic decompensation and other end-stage liver disease outcomes. And what was unique and what we found with regards to this study is that despite antiretroviral therapy, and in particular effective antiretroviral therapy, co-infected patients still had higher rates of hepatic decompensation compared to those with hepatitis C only. In a separate subgroup analysis exclusively among co-infected patients, we evaluated risk factors for hepatic decompensation. And we found that diabetes mellitus, non-black race and severe anemia were strongly associated with hepatic decompensation. Of note, we evaluated whether high versus low hepatitis C viral loads were also associated with hepatic decompensation in an exploratory analysis, uh, and we found no association. I think our study has important uh, potential clinical implications. Uh, certainly finding that um, there is a slight decrease in rates of liver decompensation for co-infected patients who achieve HIV RNA suppression really emphasizes the importance to both clinicians and patients that co-infected patients really need to achieve a suppressed HIV viral load to slow progression to hepatic decompensation. 
I think in addition, given that we found that co-infected patients have higher rates of hepatic decompensation despite effective antiretroviral therapy, I think both providers and clinicians really need to be open to initiating hepatitis C treatment for, to achieve viral cure and hopefully prevent progression to end-stage liver disease. So where our group goes from here is we've been very interested in trying to determine what combination of clinical variables and laboratory variables can be used to predict future hepatic decompensation. To allow a provider to be able to determine what is the likelihood of that co-infected patient to go on to hepatic decompensation and to determine the need and urgency of antiviral therapy. Particularly when we're living in an era when there are so many new antivirals that are on the horizon but which are taking time to be tested in co-infected patients prioritizing the urgency of antiviral therapy with predictive models that could utilize both laboratory and clinical variables would be really helpful for patients.